<laughs> Amen. It takes another dad to appreciate the dad jokes. Hebrews chapter 10, <laughs> verses 24 and 25. It says this. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to ask you also to go to Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Hallelujah. We're going to dive into what it means. Amen. Hallelujah. The importance of assembling, gathering, Coming together, hallelujah, as believers, as disciples, hallelujah, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, hallelujah. And it says this in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. I want to talk to you. I'm going to continue to talk about understanding the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And hallelujah. Today we're going to talk about understanding Lordship through fellowship. Hallelujah. Another title can be We're Better Together. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing King. Hallelujah. Tell somebody we're better together. We're better together. Hallelujah. We're better together. Hallelujah. Fellowship, Amen. We've been talking about the fact, hallelujah, that the, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is supposed to be Lord over my life. Amen. We've got two chambers in our heart. Amen. We've got the throne and the cross. We either, we either have Jesus on the throne as we pick up the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Or we keep Jesus on the cross while we sit on the throne. But if I'm going to have Jesus Christ reign over my life, hallelujah, and where he reigns, he pours. Hallelujah. If I'm going to have him reign over my life as Lord, I can't just have him Lord in one area. If I don't make him Lord of all, then we'll find that we develop a slow leak in our relationship. Hallelujah. So that his Lordship does not affect every area of my life. And gradually, eventually, progressively, ultimately, I'll find that really he isn't my Lord at all because instead of me doing what he says I'll do what I say amen hallelujah understanding his lordship and one of the elements of lordship is fellowship amen amen hallelujah tell somebody fellowship, fellowship. hallelujah lordship consists of relationship fellowship discipleship, stewardship, hallelujah, and even partnership, hallelujah. But what we're going to talk about tonight is the fellowship, amen, hallelujah, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. This wasn't part of the message, amen, but there is a difference between assembling and gathering, amen, hallelujah. You can be gathered all in one place with no common function, no common goal, no common purpose. But assembling is where everybody gets in their proper place, hallelujah, to do their proper job, amen, doing their part, hallelujah, helping one another to become better as a whole than we are as individuals. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to come to church to be assembled. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 30. And what we're going to do today, because the Bible paints many pictures of the importance of the fellowship. Hallelujah. Of believers. Amen. In some places, it compares the fellowship of believers to a body. We are a body, it says, where every joint supplies, hallelujah. And it also gives us a picture here in the book of Proverbs of something we can learn about the fellowship 
of discipleship in our relationship with Jesus Christ, it's a lesson from the locust. Amen? Amen. And this is in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 20. What was it? Verse 20, um, 4 through 27. But even before we go there, amen, I'd like to start at where it starts. In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 1, it says, The words of Agur, the son of Jekai, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Athel, even unto Athel and Yukal. And I looked those names up. A lot of stuff in the book of Proverbs. Amen. Hallelujah. My son wrote a book called Proverbs, man. Amen. It'll help you if you haven't picked it up yet. Hallelujah. But a lot of book stuff in the book of Proverbs. We know the book of Proverbs was primarily written by King Solomon. But we see here that some of what was written was written by somebody named Agur. Agur means gatherer and collector. He was a son of Jekai. Jekai means obedient. So the son of obedience will be a gatherer and a collector, bringing some things together. Even the prophecy, the man spake unto Athel. Athel means God with us. Even unto a theo and you cow. You cow means devoured. So there's a prophecy spoken here by the son of obedience to people whom God is with, but for some reason they're still being devoured. And Agur said this. He said, I'm not, I don't claim to be the smartest man. I don't claim to know it all. But what I do know is that in order for me to understand who God is, who has ascended into heaven or descended, who has gathered the wind in his fist, who has bound the waters in a garment, who had established the ends of the earth, he said. What is his name? And what is his son's name? In order to understand the lordship, hallelujah, of God's relationship with us, you can't separate who God is from who his son is. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's lordship through the relationship with his son that causes us to enter into discipleship through fellowship. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 24 through 27 says this, There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are people not strong, yet they gather their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet they go forth by bands. All of them go forth by bands. And we're going to learn a lesson from the locusts on the discipleship of fellowship in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know, many of you have probably never seen a locust, but you've probably seen a grasshopper. Just for the animal enthusiasts, I didn't kill this. <laughs> Uh, I didn't kill this. As a matter of fact, my wife went out on the back porch and she said, oh, what is that over there? I said, is that a grasshopper? 
I said, look at Jesus. She said, well, I needed that. I, I wanted a grasshopper for my object lesson. A grasshopper and a locust are pretty much the same thing. As a matter of fact, every locust is a grasshopper, but not every grasshopper is a locust. Kind of reminds me of the fact that every disciple is a believer, but not every believer is a disciple. The thing that separates the grasshopper from the locust is the same thing that separates the believer from the disciple. Amen. It's how they grow up and how they go forward. Amen? Now grasshoppers, you know grasshoppers. Grasshoppers, matter of fact, let's go somewhere. Let's go to um, the book of Numbers. I think the Bible can show you even better than I can tell you about the way that we view grasshoppers. Proverbs, Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. It says, and there we saw the giants. This is when Caleb and Joshua and 10 other spies went into the promised land. All 12 of the spies went into the promised land and saw the same thing. Saw that the land was flowing with milk and honey. Saw that the fruit, the grapevines were so huge that they had to take a cluster of grapes and carry it between a staff or a stick on two men. They saw that the land was everything that God said it was, but 10 of the people came back and said, the giants in the land. We can't take the land. Two of the disciples came back and said, they're bread for us. Their defense is down. We can do exactly what God said we can do. It all depends on how you view you. Hallelujah. Remembering that God is with you. Amen. It says this in Numbers chapter 13 verse 33. It says, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so were we in their sight. Just a side note, you teach people how to view you. If you see yourself with a grasshopper mentality, then that's how other people will see you. Grasshoppers are not that impressive. Grasshoppers don't bite. They don't do much. But that's just one grasshopper. But when they come together as a swarm of locusts, they change nations and generations. Hallelujah. God has called us to come together in fellowship. Hallelujah. So that we can change nations and generations. Amen. Hallelujah. The fellowship of discipleship because of our relationship with Jesus. It causes a synergistic effect. See, this is what happens. First is there's an internal change that causes the grasshopper to grow and mature exponentially. You see, there's a reason for us to come together collectively, amen, because we help each other to grow exponentially, amen? Amen, let's go somewhere. Let's go to um, Genesis chapter two, amen, hallelujah. I wanna show you the importance of fellowship. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says, And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. God created everything in the beginning and said it was good. He said, called the light out of dark and said it was good. 
separated the waters from the waters and put a firmament in the midst of the waters and, and created the animals, fish and fowl, people, everything that he made and he said it was good. But after he made everything, including the man, he said it was not good that man be alone. Hallelujah. In other words, there's something in the individual man that can only be pulled out by someone else through fellowship. And so he created the woman. And see, I'm not just talking about the husband-wife relationship. I'm talking about the coin and the exchange where people of precious like faith draw from each other and help each other and encourage each other and sharpen one another. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To become more and more like Jesus. Amen. 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 You know the verse of scripture. It says, uh, the Bible says this. It says that iron sharpeneth iron. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17. Iron sharpeneth iron. So it's important as believers, amen, in order for us to progress beyond just being believers into being disciples, hallelujah, that we come together in fellowship because we're supposed to help each other by iron sharpening iron. We're assembling and fellowshipping because we're both following the same person. And when we, as disciples, through discipleship, enter into fellowship, we sharpen one another like iron sharpening iron. Now, when you don't associate, conglomerate, affiliate with people of precious like faith and you are unequally yoked to fellowship with somebody else the relationship doesn't have the same effect it becomes a relationship where one gets dull and the other gets damaged because there's no sharpening of people of precious like faith encouraging each other to believe the same thing through fellowship, discipleship, and a relationship with Jesus Christ. But the gets dull because there's no exchange there's no koinonia there's no fellowship the wood gets damaged because all it's exposed to is a compromised Christian and therefore it does not see the holiness that would cause it to want to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ it's so important that we fellowship one with another. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. The Bible says the locusts have no king. Yet they go forward all of them by bands. They don't have somebody standing over their shoulder making them do what it is that they're supposed to do. Yet for some reason because of the internal change in them, they do it anyway. If we have a relationship with Jesus that turns into a discipleship where we want to follow him, even though we do have a king, we don't have a king that makes us do everything like a puppet on a string. 
But there should be an internal change in me where my want to get saved. Hallelujah. And I not only want to follow him, but I want to, hallelujah, associate and affiliate with you. Amen. When I meet Christians that don't like church, it sends up a little bit of an antenna. How is it that you don't want to be with people that believe like you believe? Hallelujah. How is it that you feel more comfortable with the world than you do with the church? Amen. Hallelujah. How is it that you don't want to be with us here on earth, yet you want to spend eternity with us in heaven? Something doesn't add up. Amen. There should be a relationship that causes a discipleship and therefore makes me want to enter into fellowship with people that believe like I believe. How can two walk together except they agree? There should be something that changes in me. Growing up by changing not only my behavior, behavior is external, what people can see, but changing my internal locus of control. It should be something that changes in me that makes me want a fellowship with people that believe like me. First Corinthians chapter one. It's hard to grow without fellowship. I didn't think about this until now, but how many of you lift weights? Mm. Got a couple of <laughs> I saw a few hands go up to half mass. I saw one hand go up. <laughs> now, you know, I lift a little bit. When you get to be my age, you don't try to lift for power most of the time. You know, you try to live just to just to maintain. <laughs> but, you know, these young people, amen, and y'all people that are in good shape, amen, when y'all lift, you want to push yourself beyond your limits. And it's hard to push yourself beyond your limits without somebody there to spot you, to encourage you, to push you, to let you know you got one more in there. Come on, you got a little more, you got a little more. Push it, push it. See, you gotta have somebody that will spot you, somebody to encourage you, somebody that believes like you and you will fellowship with. First Corinthians chapter one, verses nine and 10, it says this, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you brethren by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. See, if we're following the same one, we should, hallelujah, speak the same thing, have the same mind, believe, hallelujah, the same thing, so that we have fellowship one with another. Fellowship through discipleship because of our relationship with Jesus. Like I said, the locusts don't have a king. Yet they go forward, all of them, together by bounds. What is our excuse? That we don't go forward together and want to come Together, The locusts have an internal hormone change that makes them grow up. We ought to have something internal change in us that makes us want to grow up. And in order to grow up, we need a relationship 
We need discipleship and we need the fellowship. Fellowship one with another. Iron sharpening iron. So not only should we grow up, but like the locusts, we should go forward. Where's my grasshopper at? I lost my grasshopper. <laughs> I said the grasshopper is not that impressive, but um, actually a grasshopper can jump two feet. Now, what is that about? Like three inches? So a three-inch creature that can jump about two feet that's probably like you or me jumping two football fields. That's pretty impressive. But do you know what the locusts can do when they come together and assemble and grow up and mature and work together to go forward? They can not only jump two feet, but they can leap and collectively ride the wind for miles. As believers, when we come together, there's more than just an exchange with one another. But there's something that is unleashed in us when we come together in fellowship that causes our lives to be able to progress and change exponentially, hallelujah, like riding the wind for miles. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. See, some people don't know this. Some people don't believe this. They think church is just where you go for the preacher to take your money. <laughs> we watched a movie the other day, and I thought it was going to be a pretty good movie. What was it called? Forgiveness. And on this movie, you know, there's a pastor. He picked somebody up that was broke down on the side of the road. And, you know, he seemed like a good dude helping this young man that was going through and all the different things he was doing, counseling people only to find out at the end that he was running a prostitution ring. And I'm like, why is it that when you watch TV and the movies, they always turn the Christian into something crazy and turn the preachers into somebody that's stealing people's money or doing something? What kind of ideas are we letting the world put into our head about what fellowship with the believer is? Even in the music that we listen to sometimes, it tells the people that they're trying to reach, because you know they're trying to reach the youth with the message. But the message that they reach them with is telling them that they can't trust the believers. They can't trust the fellowship. And people talk about their hypocrites in the church and People that have been offensive to them in the church. Well, the church is just a microcosm of the area that you live in. So guess what? The same way that there are hypocrites in the church, there are hypocrites in the world. The same way that people that might have offended you in the church, you get offended going to Walmart. But guess what? You still go to Walmart. <laughs> We can't let people poison our mind to the importance of the fellowship because something happens in the fellowship. I know I had to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4, but I'm going to speed it up. We'll go to Psalms chapter 133. Psalms chapter 133, verses 1 through 3, it says this. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. 
The Bible says something happens when we come together in fellowship, in unity. We already discovered, hallelujah, that it helps us to grow up exponentially as iron sharpens iron. And we encourage one another to love and to good works, helping each other to be all that we can be. Hallelujah. But it says here that there's something that happens when we come together in unity. Amen. Hallelujah. And just to let you know, it doesn't have to be a thousand. Amen. Hallelujah. For God to do something mighty and powerful. Hallelujah. If there are two of you, hallelujah, that will come together in fellowship, the Bible says, hallelujah, when two or more are gathered in my name, I'm there in the midst. Hallelujah. Somebody's missing something in their life because they won't let God in, get in the midst of their fellowship. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment, hallelujah, that was poured upon the head, that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment, even as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there, where, in the unity, in the fellowship, where the brethren dwell together, where people come together in discipleship and fellowship because of a common relationship with Jesus Christ. It says it is there, hallelujah, the Lord commands a blessing, even life evermore. There is a blessing that comes through fellowship. So coming to church is not just a weekly routine or what we do because that's what we do on Sunday or Wednesday and we get nothing out of it. No, there's a unity. There's a community. There's a communion. There's a union. There's a coming together. Hallelujah. There's a fellowship, discipleship, and relationship bond that takes place. Hallelujah. That the Bible says God commands a blessing on it. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. In other words, God gets involved, hallelujah, when we fellowship with one another and causes something to happen in each and every one of our lives so that we together, hallelujah, are more powerful, more anointed, hallelujah, than we are individually. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. The synergistic effect, hallelujah, where the sum total of our parts is not the sum or the maximum amount of what we are capable of. The Lord commands a blessing. Like the wind that gets beneath the locust's wings and causes that grasshopper that can jump two feet to fly for miles. When we come together in fellowship, discipleship, relationship, something happens in the spirit where God causes his favor, his blessings to be poured on you. There's a blessing, honey, that you, there's a blessing for coming to church. Amen. Amen? Amen? There's a blessing for fellowshipping one with another. Amen? Amen? There's a blessing that comes as a result of the relationship, discipleship, and fellowship. Hallelujah. Where the iron sharpens the iron. Amen? Hallelujah. I didn't get into it, the fact that in allowing iron to sharpen iron, there's also a stewardship. Because it says this in 2 Kings, that the axe head is borrowed. The anointing is not yours. The power and equipment for ministry and living holy and godly 
is not yours. Hallelujah. It's borrowed. Hallelujah. From the Holy Ghost. So as a good steward over what God has given me, I should allow myself to be sharpened at least weekly. Otherwise, like it happened there, I can lose the axe here. Because I haven't been a good steward and had stewardship through fellowship, through discipleship, through relationship. But if I allow my relationship with Jesus Christ to cause me to stay under his lordship hallelujah it causes an internal change in me hallelujah so that I want to be in his discipleship and therefore want to dwell in the fellowship of the believers the disciples the people who have precious life Faith, the people who want to be as close to Jesus as me. Something changes internally and can even be seen externally on my life when I enter into fellowship. The Lord commands a blessing so that blessing moves me and carries me Hallelujah, further than my ability. And that blessing causes me to live above the common fray of everyday negativity and this world's poverty and gravity that tries to pull me down daily. Hallelujah. We encourage ourselves, hallelujah, and provoke one another to love and good works through the fellowship. The fellowship of discipleship. I'm going to have you go somewhere because let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37. And then we'll shut it down there. But like I said, not only do we see the example of the locust, but the fellowship, relationship, discipleship, ministry that we saw through the locust, we see it here as a picture of the body where we fitly join together become all that God has called us to be. You know what it's called where two bones come together, right? It's called a joint. You know what happens in the joint? Growth happens in the joints. The epiphyseal Cap. Is that right, Jerry? That's where the joints. Oh, that, okay. Ain't that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the growth happens in the joint. But not only does growth happen in the joints where the bones come together, but movement happens in the joints. Where the bones come together and if we're wondering why there's no growth and wondering why there's no movement, it may be because we're not coming together. Hallelujah. Like the locusts or like the Joints. It says this in Ezekiel chapter 37. I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and sat me down in the midst of a valley that was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there was much, very many in an open valley, and lo, they were very dry. That's a description of many Believers spread out in an open valley, not collected, just spread out in an open valley, 
stuck in the valley that the Bible says they're supposed to walk through and get to the other side as the, yea, the Lord is with me even though I walk through the valley. Amen. They're stuck in the valley and it says they're very dry because there's no sharpening, no encouraging, no building up of one another. They're very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The reason we come here in fellowship and discipleship in church, hallelujah, is so that the preacher can prophesy, hallelujah, and command us to hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live, and I will lay sin you upon you, and I will bring you up flesh upon you, and cover you, and cover you, and cover you. We're talking about being under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, where he covers you, hallelujah, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, so I prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for preachers that will get in the pulpit as the churches assemble and gather and in fellowship and they'll prophesy. Prophesy as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking and the bones came together. Now, interesting, he didn't tell the bones to came to get, come together. It was just something internally in each one of them, hallelujah, that made them say, this is what I'm supposed to do. I don't have nobody telling me that I need to, but there's something happening on the inside of me that will cause me to do what I'm supposed to, hallelujah. So I want to come together, hallelujah. I prophesied and there was this noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone. Hallelujah. I didn't point it out. Hallelujah. But a threefold cord is not easily broken. Hallelujah. It's not just me and you coming together, but we got to come together in our relationship, fellowship and discipleship with him. Hallelujah. So you and me and Jesus make up the majority. It is a Oh, God. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them from above. Lordship is where you are covered from above. But there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. You need a preacher that will prophesy to the situation and talk to your circumstance and command you and tell you to do the same. Hallelujah. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds. O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may Live, so I prophesied. When we come together in relationship, discipleship, and fellowship, my job as the preacher, the pastor, the prophet, the teacher is to prophesy as I'm commanded. And breath came into them, and they lived. Many Christians are just going through the motions and not living because they've forsaken the assembling of themselves in fellowship, discipleship, and relationship with Jesus Christ. But I prophesy, I speak to the situation you're going through, and I say, Live. 
and they stood up on their feet. We're not just doing this just to try to get the seats filled. I'm not trying to call people to get in the seats. I'm trying to call people to get on their feet. I'm trying to help people to know that the thing that they need to get through to their breakthrough is the fellowship and relationship of discipleship with Jesus Christ. And they stood on their feet an exceeding great army. The body of Christ, we're supposed to be a great army, an exceeding great army. We think that we're a group of people that are barely hanging on. But the Bible says we're supposed to be a great army. I didn't read this earlier, but you know what it says in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 27, from the Message Bible? It says the locusts are leaderless insects, yet they strip the field like an army regiment. When we work together, there should be an effectiveness in us collectively that is undeniably and unmistakably the work of the hand of God upon our life so that the group of disassociated, disarticulated, dry bones becomes a marshalling army. But it only happens when our relationship with Jesus Christ moves us to discipleship where we want to follow him. And we want to go up. And we want to be told what to do. And therefore the internal change in me and you causes us to enter into fellowship. One with another. Iron sharpening iron. Provoking one another to love and good works. Causing, hallelujah, each other to become everything that God put on the inside of you and me to be. Amen. Meet. Help meets. To help each other meet our potential. That's what happens through the fellowship discipleship and relationship with Jesus Christ's Lordship. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. I believe this book is an outflow and overflow of years of working toward what I believe God said and not always seeing the results that I respect, expected. Mm -hmm. Those things that were frustrations to me, I know that other people go through those same frustrations. Right. I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you just read it one time and shelf it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a book that you look at, you read, um, and you almost gotta stop and take notes and just think sometimes. Yeah. Well, you heard it here. There's nothing more that needs to be said. Check out Continue at RoyalThoughts.org. We have the ebook up right now. Uh, you can download that. You can pre-order the paperback copy. Um, send it to a friend. Share this video. Uh, nothing more needs to be said. I appreciate you. Amen. I appreciate you. All right. Take care.
Wait a minute. 